As long as people have worn clothes, they have been spinning fiber. And, you know, cavemen might have had skins, but right after that, there have been drop spindles and ways of spinning yarn forever. And way back when, it was mainly animal fiber, not cotton. Cotton and some of those plant fibers didn't get popular until the Industrial Revolution when they could spin it fast. It used to be every household had a spinning wheel, a drop spindle, a weaving loom to be able to make their own clothes. We couldn't go down to Walmart and buy clothes. So it's fascinating to see nowadays how people don't understand how fabric is made and to take it back down to that simple level for people is really exciting because then they get it. They get how it's made and why it's made like that and then they appreciate what they have a little bit more and I, I like that part about it. Take a moment to reflect on what you're wearing right now. Whatever it is, it's made of fiber. So who made it? And what is it made of? And how did you get it? Most people give these questions very little thought. The way we obtain clothes, like groceries and other consumer goods, has been simplified with the passage of time, not involving an easy trip to the store. I go to yarn stores on occasion if I want to do a project that I want very specifically to be straightforward, this is what I'm gonna do. Otherwise, no, everything that I do, I spin myself and make myself because the finished projects, when they're made with something that I've done, it takes longer but also has more heart and creativity into it. And you can see that when you compare it to something that just has store-bought yarn. A shopping trip can mean missing out on the rewards generated by ingenuity, resourcefulness, and accomplishment. For Don Ryden, the creation of fiber and its myriad outcomes is built on a process that should be savored. A fiber artist is a type of artist that uses hair or fibers from different animals or it could be from a plant like cotton to create something unique and it could be a fabric, it could be a 3D object, it could be a picture even with fiber as a medium rather than an oil or a pen or a pencil or anything like that. It's just another way of putting color to something. I think a lot of people are artists, they just don't admit that they're creative enough, but to be able to take something as mundane as string and put it together in a way that makes a finished object, I think is a form of art. No matter the end result, the process begins with the fiber itself, the building block for all Dawn's creations. And for her, it all starts with feel. I am a very tactile person. I love touching things. And it's not very good at certain art shows to be able to touch things, unfortunately. And so in a way, it, get, it, it's, it keeps my hands busy. Because my brain is thinking of other things, but my hands want to do something too. And being able to knit while my son's at band, or be able to spin whenever I'm out at the pool watching my kids swim, it, it, it adds dimensionality to everything. And it helps me remember things too. Some people learn by reading, some people learn by listening, and I learn by feeling. And so when I feel something in my hands while I'm watching something, I actually remember things better. And textiles are things that have a, a feel to them. Like when I was in high school, I used to shop for clothes and I would run my hands across the clothes to figure out which one felt the best to me. And it's a very hands-on thing. And textile is a variation of tactile which is basically feeling it and seeing how it feels in your fingers and some things are slick and some things are fuzzy and some things, you know, everything has a different feel and you have to pay attention to that when you use it in fiber arts. Great art, of course, appeals to multiple senses. So while feel may be the starting point, there are many other factors that must be assimilated into a creative fiber project. Well, I mean, the first one is the sense of touch. Most people can spin a yarn if they've been doing a while. They can spin a yarn without looking at it because the sense of touch really gets it going. A blind person can spin a yarn. But next definitely would be the sight because it has to look beautiful to you or look creative or interesting, whatever floats their boat, so to speak. But seeing it is very important, of course, because when we look at it, sometimes it gives a sense of emotion when you see something, depending on the texture of it. And you can see a texture without touching it. When people go to yarn stores that knit or crochet, First they'll touch it and then they'll smell it because for some reason it has 
a certain quality to it that you can smell. You can smell if it's real wool, you can smell if it's cotton, you can smell if it's silk, and people don't think about that. Nobody wants to smell bad. Just like when hearing a rumor, one should always consider the source. Dawn definitely does that when it comes to choosing a fiber to work with, knowing full well at the outset that the source is as important as the final piece of artwork. Many don't realize just how many fiber sources there really are. Personally, I use a lot of wool and a lot of alpaca and bamboo and silk. But you can also use things like cotton and uh, linen, which is from another plant. Uh, goat, I do have some goat, some angora. You can also use rabbit, angora rabbit for, um, oh, you can also do uh, milk. <laughs> there's milk and there's actually uh, crab fiber that you can get and what they do is they take the uh, milk in this case and they kind of denature the proteins and they string it out like cotton candy and then it becomes a fiber that you can spin as well. It's really neat. <laughs> Wool and bamboo are my two favorites for very two different reasons. Alpaca comes a close third and then maybe angora and something else. The animal fibers tend to I tend to enjoy better than the plant fibers. They have I don't know, they just have more life to them as compared to the plants. Plants are kind of one-dimensional, whereas the animals, they have some spring to them that the plant fibers don't have. When I make something with wool, it stays in the form I make it in, for the most part. It's usually soft and warm and cuddly, kind of like a teddy bear. When I make something with bamboo and silk and milk, it drapes, it's really shiny and it's very luscious looking, but I don't use it on certain things that I'm gonna wear next to my skin because it doesn't have that warm cuddly feeling as wool or alpaca or angora does. And that's part of the reason why I like it more. For Dawn, each kind of fiber has an innate personality. When it comes to animals in particular, there's even some perceived deviation within the same fiber type. Again, it's related to feel, but in this way, it's more of a sixth sense. I mean, first, there's a personality to the animal. There's, there's a, a sheep that I particularly liked once. It was a baby sheep, and her name was Domino. She was black and white, and she was bouncing around. She was coming and rubbing against me. And I remember her because the next time I came back, she was an adult, and we were shearing her. And I said, I want this fleece because of her personality. And then after I touched her fleece, I figured out what I wanted to do with it. But it definitely was an emotional connection from the animal and deciding what I wanted to do with her fleece when it was done. And her yarn is just as crazy as she is, <laughs> which is wonderful, because the personality of the sheep came through in the final product. And taking the fleece to the dye pot to figure out what color looks good on that, what personality of color looks good on it, to the yarn and spinning it how I want it, to how I was gonna make the hat in this case, it definitely came through from beginning to end. Fiber art, like other creative endeavors, is not something that can be rushed. In fact, because the raw material must be harvested first, the entire process can be very lengthy from origin to completion. Almost worked. If I were to go get a fleece from a sheep, first I'd have to spend a day going up to be able to pick the sheep out and get them sheared, because that could take a couple hours, depending on how many fleece I want to get. But once I get the fleece and I come back home, I would soak it probably for three days, because you have to clean it. Because sheep are animals, they live outside, there's cockleburrs, there's dung tags, I mean, they're not clean. They roll around the dirt, they get in the thorny stuff, so you have to clean it first and I have to soak it in a bucket and wash it with soap and get it clean and dry because then it'll take a couple days to dry. Wool absorbs water very well and so to get something completely dry will take two days minimum. In the summer it will be even shorter than that and the winter it'll take longer than that. So we're probably up to about a week just to get it washed. And then after that, I could spend an entire day picking a fleece. Picking a fleece is pulling it apart and making it fluffy to go into the carter. Because after you get it fluffy, you put it into the carter, and a bat will take me about 15 minutes, and a bat's about three ounces, but a fleece is like 10 pounds. And there's 16 ounces a pound, so that's 160 ounces divided by 
three, so you can see how long that's getting. So it would take me to card an entire fleece, it would take me a couple weeks to get it all carded and prepped and ready to spin into a yarn. And spinning yarn is where it's, it's the most time consuming, I think, depending on how you wanna spin it. If you spin it fine, it's gonna take a lot longer. It could take me months. The longest one I've made, it was 1,200 yards of a lace weight and it took me about a month to spin it all. And that really wasn't all of it. That wasn't an entire fleece. That was just a portion of a fleece. And so to spin it, that will take a long time to get it to the right diameter to be able to make a useful yarn. And then you have to ply it to make it stronger. You have to decide, are you gonna weave it into a fabric or are you gonna knit or crochet it into an object? If you weave it, it's gonna take longer too because you have to get your warp on your loom to get it ready. And that could take probably two weeks to get it warped and woven depending on how long you want it. If you're gonna knit it, you can immediately start knitting it. And that would take, if I had just worked on it, it would take me about a week to knit a sweater out of it. If I had all the free time in the world to be able to knit a sweater. But if you warp it on a loom and, and weave it into a fabric, then you have to cut the fabric and sew it together, which would probably take two days to sew it. Sewing's pretty fast. So all in all, it'd probably take a month or two to get something useful out of it from raw fleece to finished product. It's a very long process. <laughs> I, I like carting because I get to play with colors after it's all dyed. Carting is uh, putting the fibers together in a way that I could make a rainbow, I could make it, you know, a sad looking bat and all blues, and or I can make it happy and crazy. It, that's a lot of fun with the different textures, but spinning the yarn is also a joy because I get to make a final product out of it. That, it's kind of like the halfway point for me. Whereas the yarn, once I'm done with the yarn, I could do something with that. I could really create a project. Certainly not everyone has the patience to work in the fiber arts. It takes a deep interest and a genuine love for the process, two things that, for Dawn, took a while to develop. Now that she has fully developed a relationship with the fiber arts, she knows that her art will be as limitless as her imagination. Way back when, when I was a teenager, preteen, my mom showed me how to crochet, like many grandparents or mothers do. And I did it, but I really wasn't into it. It was just one of those things that was neat to pass the time. And then I put it down for a very, very long time. And when I went to college, one of my classmates was opening a yarn store. And I told her if she opened her yarn store, I would be the first one for that first knitting class. Cause I knew how to crochet basically, but I didn't know how to knit. And so I went to that first knitting class and I was getting it. I enjoyed it, I had a lot of fun with it. And so I started knitting more and more often. And I was a young mother at the time. So I had a lot of free time to knit. And then I went to a fiber festival up by Tulsa and I saw someone spinning and I thought that is cool and I sat behind her because most spinners are very welcome and open to people watching them and I sat behind her and I watched her and being as tactile as I am I knew I like to feel things I'm like I really want to do that and that day my mother-in-law and I bought a spinning wheel and I brought it home and I started spinning and from there you know I started buying wool and started trying to find people with sheep and and it just kind of expanded and kept growing and kept growing. I kept spinning more wool and I started dyeing wool to get different colors because I mean natural colors are lovely but I wanted more color because I love color and when I started dyeing wool I had to clean it and card it and so I started carding it and getting different textures and it just built and built into this magnificent thing that I do today and there's so and it's not just using fibers for yarn but there are so many uses for a fiber that I, you know, that I do now. There's felting and there's weaving and there's knitting and there's crochet and there's tatting. It's never just any one thing because it all just, it's all related. It's just how you want to play with that fiber. Working with natural fibers, especially for the manufacture of clothing, is an ancient practice. As with any procedure, technology has changed the process over time. But it remains an art form that, when patience is engaged, is just as enjoyable when using the old tried and true techniques. The process itself hasn't really changed much. It's the same process. You take a string or a fiber and you twist it into a yarn to be able to make something out of it. And that is very, it, it brings us back around to the basics, just like farming, you know? 
sometimes you have to get back to basics to appreciate what you have. And you think you might know it all, but then there's going to be something coming out again, some techniques reinvented that you thought, oh, I thought I knew this, but then you're going to see something in a different light and use it in a different way that you didn't expect to. It's very open-ended. There's always something going on and always some light bulb going off in your head when you try something new, which is exciting. I think that's part of the reason I like it. It's always changing. Practicing some of the same techniques that were utilized thousands of years ago is pleasing for Dawn. In fact, there is quite a significant population of fiber artists who support and continue to learn from one another this incredibly enduring craft that was once dominated by men. A long time ago, the men were the weavers. The men wove everything. It was a man's job to spin the yarn and weave. And then probably the past couple hundred years is when women started really getting into it. Because, well, think about the guilds of the kings and queens. They were the weavers and the weavers were the men. The women's job was to take care of the family. You know, more often men will stop and watch me spin than women. Or children will too. Children and men are the two that will stop. Children will stop and want to touch it, but men will stop and try and figure out how it works and try and figure out the design. They're not so interested in the yarn itself, but the machine, and that's fascinating for them. No matter how busy this mother of three becomes, Dawn will always find time for fiber. In the end, it's the time she devotes to her art that gives so much back to her. They asked me that the other day. It says, why do you spend time spinning yarn just to make a, a scarf? And I said, well, why would, you know, do you pay someone to go drop the ball in the hole at the golf course? No, you take the time to enjoy the game. And for us, it's enjoying the entire process, not just the finished product. Yarn has a lot of different uses that people don't think about. The world would be kind of sad without any string in it. <laughs>